NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Happy Sunday. Come on inside Doug Kingsmore Stadium with us in Clemson, South Carolina, where the Tigers are up against it today against St. John, Seth Beer, Logan Davidson, and the Clemson Tigers need a win today after a loss last night to Vanderbilt. They got to go up against John Valenti, the Big East Player of the Year. Hi, Miss Valenti. Yeah. And they're also trying to solve Rubik's Cubes in the dugout. That's a lot of work. We'll try to go up against that Clemson pitching staff here in just a moment. Let's take a look at the bracket. Last night, Vandy won the winner's game. They're in the regional final tonight. And they await the winner of this game. Loser is sent home. Season is over. With Chris Burke, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Great to have you with us here in Clemson. Clemson's hosted a regional Berkey each of the last three years, and they haven't gotten out. And once again, they're in this elimination game. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's any denying that there's a lot of heat on Monty Lee in this club. As you said, three straight years, the host, they are yet to win the 1-0 game. They lost it again last night, and now they find themselves in the elimination Sunday portion of this regional against maybe the best team they've ever faced in this 1-1 game, a very talented St. John's club. Yeah, the Johnny showed off some power yesterday and their victory over Moorhead State. Red Storm did not win one game last year in Clemson, but a big victory yesterday using the long ball. Yeah, we know about their pitching, the number four ERA in the country. Yesterday it was all about the offense. And they, they came up with some situational hitting, but what we saw is the long ball. Wyatt Mascarella with two home runs that really ignited the offense. One almost off the scoreboard, another one went way deep into the left field seats. The long ball carried the Johnnies yesterday. They scored 11 runs. A very good sign for a team that we know can pitch. Might need it again today. Let's play some ball. Winner plays Vandy tonight. Loser season is over. First pitch coming up. Beautiful Sunday in Clemson in the upstate of South Carolina where the Tigers meet the Red Storm here at Kingsmore Stadium and it's Jeff Belge who was terrific last week in the Big East tournament that Coach Blankmeyer sends to the hill. A lot to like about this young left-hander, a fastball that really can dominate at times, a lefty that can get it up to 94 miles an hour will probably pitch in the 90, 92 mile an hour range. He's had better control lately, still not great command, so something to watch for, especially with the fastball. And this is a kid that scouts love. He was drafted out of high school and has a chance to be a really high pick going into next season. And he's going to face Kier Meredith to lead things off for Clemson. This is the first time Meredith has been in the starting lineup since late April, battling some injuries this season. And he takes strike one. Meredith today's designated hitter. Justin Hawkins, who's typically in that spot, is at third base today. And Patrick Cromwell has been struggling at the plate, is out of the lineup. So lefty on lefty. Strike two. Jeff Macias continuing the trend of deliberate strike calls yeah. in the Clemson Regional. And on three pitches, Belge gets Meredith. Logan Davidson has been leading off for Clemson. He bats second today, followed by Seth Beer, Chris Williams, Kyle Wilkie, all down a spot in the lineup. Jordan Green batting seventh, had a walk-off base hit on Friday night to knock off Moorhead State. They need to get Beer going. He, he, the bats have been solid, but nothing really spectacular to this point. The, just the one hit. Granted, it was a homer. Had a chance last night with two outs in the ninth. And if you're Clemson and you're going to get back and win three more games, you know that, that Davidson and Beer are going to have to play at an All-American level. Well, he has. Davidson, he was three for four yesterday with a run scored and an RBI and a walk. Was on base four times last night in that loss to Vanderbilt. Yeah, he did, definitely did all he could do. Bell just pounding the strike zone. Five straight. Yes. 
six pitches, two strikeouts, two outs in the first. Uh, I'd say that's a good start. The home crowd doesn't like it, but awfully impressive. Six pitches, six strikes, a couple punch outs, and now he gets Seth Beer. 21 home runs on the season, 55 in his career, four shy of the all-time Clemson record. No Tigers ever hit 16 or more in three straight seasons until this man's done it. Three-time All-American. A mock cheer from the Tiger fans who got a few hours sleep that are back here on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it's not a packed house, but, boy, they are vocal here early in the ball game. Back through the box but shaded perfectly by the Red Storm defense. And Jeff Belge has a perfect first inning. We go to the bottom of the first with St. John's coming up. Cajun Cafe cooking away. They were cooking till after 11 o'clock last night, and here they are some 12 and a half, almost 13 hours later back at it. On a Sunday afternoon, watching Jacob Hennessy pitch for the Tigers today. Yeah, Hennessy back on the mound after a few weeks off. He has been their number one starter for the better part of the year, but elbow inflammation sidelined him since May 11th. And obviously a guy they trust. They've been running him out there in game one of every series for, for most of the season. You'll see three pitches from him. Really makes his living on command. Just 14 walks on the season. John Valenti, four for nine here in the Clemson Regional. Great hitter for Coach Blankmeyer. First ever Big East Conference Player of the Year. Terrific story for the fifth-year player. Pops this one up. And it's Davidson who makes the catch one down. After Valenti, it's Jamie Gallison, Josh Shaw. You see Mascarella batting sixth with those two home runs for Coach Blankmeyer. They did not win a game here last year as they lost to Vanderbilt on Friday and UNC Greensboro on Saturday. But after another loss to Vandy on Friday afternoon, they knocked off Moorhead State. Their first win in three seasons in the postseason, Gallison. Hits one into the gap, and this one's getting down. Off a couple of bounces, Wharton plays it, and it's a double for Jamie Gallison with one out in the first. St. John's, the offense staying hot. Yesterday they played at a very high level, hitting the ball out of the ballpark, hitting the ball in the gaps. Gallison gets it started. And one thing we've noticed here in our couple days, Taylor, the ball definitely carries better during the daytime. So, I, you know, I, granted, we got two talented pitchers on the mound, but I expect to see some long balls in this game. Yeah, it's interesting, right? I mean, that we we have absolutely seen more power in these day games, if you will, and the wind blowing out to right field throughout the evening. Josh Shaw, second baseman for the Red Storm up. Just a little bit of breeze. It Here looks a nice Sunday. Yeah, it looks like it's blowing in a little bit, but I'm telling you, the, the heat of the day and it's not a big yard, just 390 to center, 360 to left center gap, and 365 to the right center gap. So from a size standpoint, this is not a big field. But it has played pretty big at night. Outside 2-1, Shaw career best numbers this year, batting over 300 with 43 runs batted in. That's a leader on the team in that category. And he had the the big hit last weekend in the Big East Tournament, a grand slam down 3 nothing in the winner-take-all final game against Seton Hall that ultimately gave the Johnnies the lead, which they would never relinquish. They showed a lot of fight in that tournament, bouncing back from a blowout in game one of the championship series or the finals of that tournament, however you want to phrase it. And took the reins of that game two and made sure that they got an automatic bid, didn't have to wait it out on selection Monday. Hit that one on the button. 
Left center field and gone. Hey, now, we got ourselves a developing situation, Taylor. The, the Johnnies, the bats are alive and well. Now two days in a row. We saw a double by Gallison and now a bomb by Shaw. Maybe a hanging changeup. I don't know. Something right in the heart of the plate. And Shaw compresses that ball well into the left center field seats. Now Bracado. He's hacking on the first pitch, and Sam Hall is there, two down. You know, that home run that Shaw hit last weekend was the first of the season for him, and here's number two. Getting hot at the right time. I mean, he's been very consistent all year long with driving in big runs. I mean, you think about it, 44 ribbies, now 46 with just a couple homers. That's a lot of big hits. Clemson Vanderbilt game was delayed by... A weather last night didn't start until after 745. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Stample hits this one a ton. See ya. Uh-oh. Oh, my. Off the facade above the stands in left field. Holy smokes, Taylor. The Johnnies are rocking and rolling, folks, coming in today. Doug Kingsmore Stadium and playing a little home run derby. I see some Clemson players heading to the bullpen. And here's the guy that hit two of them yesterday. Oh, by the way, here's the dude that launched a couple yeah. yesterday. Clemson, as I was saying, started at 7.45, and bats were alive. They're up 3 nothing against Vandy about yeah. 8.30, 8.45 yeah. last night. And here we are at lunchtime on Sunday, and now they're down 3-zip, and they're up against it. Season could be over. Yeah, facing a real dude on the mound in Jeff Belge. Told you, Hennessy, a Friday starter most of the season, but already in a tough spot. Jake Higginbotham, yesterday's starter, he's, he's down there, seems to be loosening up. Yeah. Swing and a miss. But the Johnnies get it going in the bottom half of the first inning. Josh Shaw starts it with a two-run homer. And then Luke Stample. Look at that power off the facade in left field. The Red Storm up three zip. Jacob Hennessy's in shock. Gave up a couple of homers in the first inning. Red Storm up 3 0. Monty Lee and the Tigers are up against it. Eliminated at home three straight times. There's your list ever. Clemson would join that list. They can't come back here and then win two games against Vanderbilt. Outside to Chris Williams. Berkey, what's going on in the Clemson dugout right now? Uh, not real comfortable. It's not real comfortable in right there. They see what Belge is bringing to the table as he shows you a nice swing and miss off speed pitch and the Johnnies are playing with house money, right? They've already won a game. They're here in your own facility. Everybody knows that it's three years in a row. Now we're, they've hosted, and, you know, it's it definitely an uncomfortable feeling right now in this Clemson dugout. But, again, the second most home runs in the country, it projects to be a, an offensive kind of day. And I'd be shocked if we don't get a counterpunch from the Tigers. 
Monty Lee's had three great years as the head coach here, here leading the team to being a regional host as Williams pops it up. It will be Shaw that gets it one down. He took College of Charleston to four regionals. In fact, went to the Supers with the Cougs back in 2014. But has been in position three straight years. Now, he, he did. He lost Oklahoma State, wasn't able to force an extra game two years ago, did force the Monday game yeah. against Vanderbilt last year, but has had to come out of an elimination game each of these three seasons. Yeah, it's just a really tough spot to be in. you got to win three games before Vanderbilt wins one. Kyle Wilkie has hit down the line and foul. Tigers 46 and 15 on the season. And that is pop foul. This is their 43rd NCAA tournament appearance, which is the fifth most in history, trailing only Texas, FSU, Miami, and Oklahoma State. They have been in the tournament 30 of the last 31 years. But not only is their last appearance in the College World Series in 2010, it's the last time they got to the Super Regionals. Yeah, it, it's been a while, a, a lot longer than these home fans would like. And, you know, sometimes maybe getting popped in the mouth right out of the gate is the best thing for you. You know, you lose a, a really tough one last night. It's a quick turnaround, and I, I think it'd be easy to maybe coast through the first four or five innings of this ball game. But when a team, team comes out and launches a couple balls on you early, it, it, it forces you to respond. So, you know, we'll see, but maybe this is a good thing for Clemson. Part of the problem is, is this guy on the mound, Jeff yeah. Belch, looks great. He, he does, he, and he's a very talented left-hander. This is a weak ground ball to Gillerman. Two down. Belch threw eight scoreless innings. Two hitter last weekend in the Big East Championship game against Seton Hall. Now that was, of course, the, the second consecutive game against the Pirates. We mentioned the home Grand Slam that Shaw hit in the first game, and then Belge comes out in the second one and does that to the Pirates and ended their season. Jeff was the most outstanding player as the Red Storm won the Big East for the ninth time. Drew Wharton fouled off the first pitch. Two down here in the second. And pops that one foul. What do you hear about his stuff, Berkey? Well, you know, it, it plays up to 94 miles an hour. So, you know, it's a, it's a type of kid that you just don't see a ton of lefties with that size and velocity. Drafted by the Red Sox out of high school from the Syracuse area in New York. And I, you look at the body, they say he's dropped about 20 pounds since showing up to campus. He's starting to really look like a big leaguer. His shoulders and the frame, the lower half, everything looks the part. And what I've been impressed early on is, boy, he's landing that changeup. Changeup has been very good so far. That's the slider there. And so not only is he throwing fastballs up, up to 92 so far, but he's already showcasing command of off-speed offerings. Did Wharton go around? Am I going to peel that? Evidently not. The Red Storm were walking off the field. Nobody asked. Yeah, I think he thought it was a strike on, on the swing and the pitch. Wharton has had a nice regional so far. He's three for seven with two runs scored and an RBI and also two walks. He's been on base five of the nine times he's been at the plate, and he has a full count. Swing and a 
miss. Third strikeout for Belge. There's that changeup again. So a couple foul balls on heaters and a changeup, a straight change to get him off the field. Jeff Belge seems to be in command of everything early on. Welcome back. Clemson, South Carolina, Taylor Zarzer, Chris Burke, where the St. John's Red Storm put three on the board in the bottom of the first. Josh Shaw with a two-run homer. Luke Stample with a bomb over the stands and left. Jacob Hennessy with a tough start facing the bottom of the order. Loser of this game, season is over. Winner plays Vanderbilt tonight at 6 Eastern time. How about that ball Luke Stample hit last inning? Out. I, I tell of you, Kingsmore Stadium. We know Ed Blankmore. Ed Blankmeyer runs a old school program. In today's day and age of bat flips and you know taking your time, my man went blue collar like he was rushing out of the gate on a ball that nearly left the facility. The uh, the peanut gallery, also known as. Mike and Chris thought that he should have taken his time. Yeah, I thought he could have slowed his roll a little bit. I mean, you know, every once in a while you hit a ball that's like a tape measure ball, and there's nothing wrong with soaking in the moment. Now, I never advocate for standing at home plate. I'm not, a, you know, if kids want to bat flip it a little bit. That's their own deal. I'm not a big fan of it, but mm -hmm. that ball right there was touched. Should also include Kyle. Mike, Kyle, and Chris. 2-2. Two, two. Beer near the line runs out of real estate. Okay, here it is. Stample after the Shaw homer. Hey, now. This, look at my man. He's like checking it out like he's wondering if it's like the outfitter's going to catch it or not. <laughs> I mean, he gives it the three or four looks in a full sprint. And then the next thing you know, the ball hits the top of the overhang over the left field seats. I don't know if we got a guesstimate, but that ball is 400 plus. Hennessy strikes out Boselli first out of the second inning. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Mississippi State with three runs already on the Samford Bulldogs in an elimination game. Lead-off home run for the Bulldogs in that one. Last year they lost game one of a regional and came back and won at Southern Miss. So nothing new for the Bulldogs if they find themselves back in that title game. Jordan Gillerman bunts it foul. You know, what, what's crazy with the Southeastern Conference, the way they're playing, there was the, the left side of the bracket was full of all the national seeds from the Southeastern Conference on the left side of the bracket. The right side of the bracket had Mississippi, from the SEC specifically, had Mississippi State, had Vanderbilt and LSU. Now, LSU lost yesterday, but Mississippi State, again, they, they lost their first one, so they got their work cut out for them, but they're riding the emotional high of the walk-off homer. Vanderbilt sitting in this regional final. Boy, I tell you, you're starting to look at, I don't know, Eight teams in the Supers, maybe, from the SEC? That would be half of the field as Gillerman's down on strikes. Hennessy with three consecutive strikeouts. I mean, Florida's in good shape. Auburn's in good shape. Arkansas's in good shape. Georgia and, and Ole Miss both still have to play their 1-0 games today. Georgia's already off to a good start against Troy. And, of course, Vanderbilt's in good shape. Uh, South Carolina's in great shape. Meanwhile, Stanford and East Carolina, a couple national seeds that have to play in an elimination yep. game today. Mike Antico chopped back at Hennessy. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Clemson. We go to the third inning. Jeff Belge and St. John's looking sharp. Jeff Belge and 
St. John's have looked terrific so far. He is off to a hot start as faced six batters and retired each of them. Looks to be very comfortable out in a big spot. Of course, we know he led the Johnnies to a Big East championship last weekend where he was dominant and seems to have carried that momentum over to this ball game. Sophomore from Syracuse, New York, will face the bottom of the Clemson order in the top of the third inning. Jordan Green, Justin Hawkins, and Sam Hall. Outside ball one. What Belge has overcome in his life is remarkable. When he was nine years old, he had this awful accident when he was skipping stones with his cousin and a stone that he, his cousin threw landed in his right eye and it destroyed his cornea. His eye became deflated and they didn't think he would ever see out of it ever again as he throws strike one. He ended up having a couple of surgeries that saved his eye but unfortunately, a couple of years ago, he had a second accident. He's messing around with some buddies playing summer league baseball. As Green pops this one up, Shaw makes the catch. One down, and someone poked him in the eye when they're just messing around in the hotel, and the same thing happened again. The cornea deflates, ruptures. He has to have numerous more procedures overcomes it again to the point where he's pitching in high school and as you said the Red Sox and several other teams were interested in taking him in the third or fourth round despite that legally blind right eye he said no I'm going to play college baseball and now here he is in the regionals a remarkable story of overcoming adversity it is and you know early on when it happened he had to re kind of relearn the game they said he spent a lot of time with with tennis balls and stuff trying to build up confidence that he could still catch and then he, it happens again as he's in high school and credit Ed Blankmeyer who stuck by the commitment that he had already offered the kid he he was going to honor it whether he was going to be able to pitch or not fortunately he recovered again and even though like you said he's legally blind in one eye he, he can see signs he fields his position with no problem and he is a terrific talent Yeah, just barely able to pick up colors, just barely yeah. able to. He's out there pitching with one eye. 20-25 vision in his left, yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes when you sit up in a booth and you've been out of fire for a while, you forget. And I don't want to make this more than it is. It's baseball. But he's out there throwing a ball, and we know the exit velocities of the ball coming back at him. I mean, we see it every year. Somebody, somebody gets smoked with a line drive back to the mound. Mm. And the fearlessness to take the mound and field your position – when you have vision issues, it just shows the competitive makeup of this young man. There's a lot to like about him. Now, one issue has been walks, and while he would never admit this, and he just, you saw walked Justin Hawkins, you, they, the rest of his team and the, and the people around St. John's have wondered if that's due to the vision issues he's had, his command has yeah. been, yeah. been a problem. That's why he's been a, a midweek starter and a guy that Coach Blankmeyer has used out of the bullpen as he faces Sam Hall with one on in the third. And I can just tell you from personal experience, certainly I've never gone through something like what Belch has, but I'm legally blind in my right eye. I, I can see I have vision in my right eye. Uh, I have 20-20 vision in my left, and my equilibrium, my depth perception is impacted that by that. I can't imagine trying to pick spots from 60 feet away and throw to a location, how much difficult that must be for Belch. Or, or what, about, what about fielding the ball from 60 feet away? The balls that are hit back at you and the reactions associated with that. I mean, or when you're covering first base and your head's bobbing all over the place and you're trying to catch the throw coming – from the first baseman. I mean, it's it's pretty remarkable. One ball, two strikes to Hawkins. To Hall, rather, with Hawkins on first base. We well, certainly, Belge has not had no trouble in the postseason after that phenomenal two-hit shutout performance against Seton Hall last weekend. And off to a great start today against Clemson, and he strikes out Hall, two down. 
A lot of life on that heater. 90 mile an hour fastball right past the freshman hall. Belge trying to walk around, work around that one out walk. And now Meredith gets another crack at him. I tell you, this is a tough matchup for a kid. Meredith has, as you said, has not played very much. And to get a left on left matchup against a power arm, it's just, this is not an easy matchup for him. Take strike one. Meredith saw his first action in six weeks last night, battling a shoulder and oblique injuries this season. Pinched hit in the loss to Vanderbilt, but this is his first start since late April. Chops this one foul, 0-2. Belge in the Red Storm lost to Vanderbilt 2-0 on Friday, then came back, and the Bats woke up on Saturday against Moorhead State. And here they are in this position trying to play Vanderbilt tonight. Strike three for Jeff Belge and the St. John's Red Storm. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good, Taylor. How about a slider on the outside corner? Meredith frozen. And Johnny's looking awfully good right now. Clemson trails St. John's 3-0. Tigers 46-15 on the season. The overall number 10 seed in the NCAA baseball tournament. Red Storm have used the long ball already. Josh Shaw and Luke Stamfel both with home runs. John Valenti, their best hitter, puts down a bunt. Hennessy has to field his position. It's a wide throw. But a good job of Williams staying on the bag, one down. Chris Williams has, has done a nice job at first base. We've seen him dig out a number of errant throws. And right here he does a really good job with his footwork. So you got the runner bearing down on you. And watch him come inside the base there and get the back foot on the bag. Hang in there with the runner bearing down on you. Made sure he got the back foot on the base. Nice footwork there by Williams. Gallison takes ball one. So Clemson's in trouble. Florida State, which this regional winner will match up with that Tallahassee regional winner, is done. They were lost each of their games in Tallahassee. So they're off to a poor start. We know about that crazy game Duke was involved with last night coming from behind to stay alive and knock off the Troy Trojans. And that's that's foul. The Campbell Campbells, rather, is who they beat yesterday. They lost to Troy. So Duke, Clemson, NC State, and Louisville all facing elimination. Tar Heels, the only one that are in the driver's seat out of everybody in the ACC. Yeah, it, it has definitely not been a good showing by the ACC so far. Now there's some talent still left. Some teams that could maybe make some runs. And this nice one play. is a better bunt than Valenti's as the Red Storm continue to ask Hennessy to field his position. Showing you some versatility. Gallison hit a bullet in the gap his first time up. Now he drops down a bunt. A one strike bunt by the way. And this is not exactly how you draw up a push bunt, but anytime you get it close to the line, it makes the angle very tough for the pitcher, and Gallison can really run. Shaw took Hennessy deep his first time up. To start the scoring for the Red Storm in the first inning. Going back to what we were saying about the ACC and what's going on right now. Do you think there's anything to that? Do you think it's just cyclical? They're traditionally one of the two or three best conferences in college baseball, but by any measure, this has been a down year. Yeah, and we, we saw it. I mean, throughout the course of the year, you couldn't figure out which of the teams were, were legitimate Omaha threats. You know, there was a lot of uh, back and forth with the top part of the league. And, you know, it's kind of bearing out here in the tournament. Monty Lee's going to make a change. That's it. Two and a third for Hennessy today, and with the season on the line, can't wait any longer. Jamie Gallison on first base, Josh Shaw coming to the plate. 
the Clemson Tigers season is on the line. Tough start for Jacob Hennessy and Clemson today. First, it was Josh Shaw with the homer in the gap, and then it was a no-doubter from Luke Stample. St. John's leads 3-0, and Hennessy's out of the game. A quick hook. Hennessy coming back off an injury and struggled against this part of the lineup. So they, they make the decision to go to the right-handed Miller here against a right-handed heavy middle part of this St. John's batting order. Miller pitched in the victory over Moorhead State on Friday night, went two and a third and did not give up a run. He has Gallas in to worry about at first base and Shaw after that second home run of the season at the plate. In there for strike one. Vanderbilt once again in the driver's seat in this regional. These three teams are here for the second consecutive season. There's a lot of head scratching going on. And the committee even admitted they made a mistake with that. It's an oversight on their part to put Clemson, Vanderbilt, and St. John's as a 1-2-3 seed for the second straight year in the same spot. what he said about that on Monday. I think in hindsight you say, would you make adjustments? And you probably could. Maybe if somebody had noticed it immediately, it would have been changed. And good on him for admitting that. But each of these teams was surprised that they were facing each other again as Gallison runs. And this is hit down the right field line. And that's a fair ball up against the wall. Gallison is going to stop at third. And Josh Shaw is in with a double. Here they go again. Johnny's playing a little baseball. Miller, who usually sinks the baseball, elevates one up and away, and Shaw does a great job of controlling the barrel. A one hopper off the right field wall. Normally you hit that ball and somebody's going to score easily on a hit and run. But Gallison doesn't come real strong around second base, holds up to see if the ball falls. So he stops at third. Johnny's got another great opportunity. Rocado flight out to left his first time. Rocado struggled a couple times in this regional and situational at bats. Clemson going to play the infield in with the second baseman on the shortstop side of the bag. How about that alignment? So you got you got Green Davidson and Hawkins all on the same side of the field and obviously a pitcher up the middle. So, you know, you almost feel like Green could maybe go just a touch more towards the shortstop. But they're certainly playing Bricado to pull the baseball. Props this one foul again. You don't see that nearly as often as you do with left-handers where no. you see a shift. Well, Clemson, Clemson's definitely new age as, as it pertains to some of the some of the shifting, and you're seeing that right here. Not afraid to leave the right side open. Big strikeout for Miller. Ninety-three miles an hour as he climbs the ladder. Bracado unable to execute again in a. Runner at third in less than two out situation. Yesterday we saw him punch out in a very similar spot. Got to be careful with this guy. Hit it off the facade. His first time up in left field. There is an empty base with two outs here in the third. First pitch a little bit away, but in there for strike one. That's grounded. 
to the first baseman, Williams. And Ryan Miller gets out of it. Clemson Tiger bats need to come to life. Down three. Three zip St. John's, but it could be, should be, four zip. It should be. You, you hit a double and you got your, your fastest player on first base on a hit and run. This should be an easy run. Gallows in, for whatever reason, stops to look at the ball. It doesn't pick up his third base coach, Mike Hampton, who's bringing him the whole way. So not only did he stop midway, watch him stop right here. He stops here. Then he goes and still turns around and looks at the ball. Your third base coach is, is whipping you around, and for some reason you're, you're kind of going halfway looking at the ball. A huge missed opportunity. Meanwhile, as Gallison thinks about that, his pitcher, Jeff Belge, is not allowed a hit yet. Worked around a walk to Hawkins last inning as struck out five Clemson Tigers, including this man, Logan Davidson, back in the first inning. And he's ahead 0-2. So when you're in a hit and run, you, yes, you're supposed to try to pick up the ball, especially if it's a high ball. So I could see the initial pause. But at that point, when, especially when that ball's behind you, you got to look at that third base coach and trust what he's telling you. And I think even after the initial pause, if he finds Hampton, he still scores. Davidson quietly hits it to Gillerman for the first out of the inning. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, LHN, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage also available through ESPN3 and the bases loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. If St. John's advances, this is the last game of Seth Beer's career. He doesn't want to think about that right now. He wants to get Clemson back in this one. Yeah, you, you try to shelf those thoughts. This is, again, this is kind of a whirlwind. These regionals, once they start, there's a lot of buildup. But once they start, boy, they go fast. And obviously the disappointment of last night, he was the last hitter of the game. And now, boom, just like that, you find yourself down a three spot and you, you try not to get too big picture focus on putting together some good ab's and start to chip away at this lead it'd be nice to get one here with their big slugger if he could put one on the board hit a home run on friday night just seemed off balance last night well vanderbilt did a great job they pitched him in which is what you have to do i was extremely impressed with the plan that Scott Brown put together to get Beer out, and I thought the pitchers executed it beautifully. Hey, now that one's hit a ton. In the left center, 3-1. Breaking balls in the strike zone to Seth Beer with two strikes are a bad idea we've seen him do it now for the second time in this regional i'm sure he's trying to bounce that breaking ball but he's just hunting them he is hunting two strike breaking balls this one stays up and that's what he does when he gets them a launch piece to right center field and belge knew it as soon as he threw it For Beer, that's his 22nd home run of the season, his 56th in his three-year career. Three behind Jeff Baker and Andy D'Alessio for the all-time Clemson record. No one currently playing college baseball has more bombs than Seth Beer. And look, we know Belge wasn't trying to throw that for a strike. And he had done the right thing, threw that fastball up the previous pitch, but... There has to be a heightened sense of awareness when beer is up that if you're going to throw a two-strike breaking ball, you better bounce it. Or what we saw from Stanball the other day from Morehead State, front door it, throw it behind him and see if you can't get it to the inside corner. But if you throw that one out over the plate, you are asking for it. Chris Williams has... Significant amount of power, too. He hit 17 this season. 
And he puts a charge into that one to center field. Gal is in up on that hill, makes the catch, two down. One of the reasons I, I just think Seth Beer's got a chance to really hit. When you have that kind of bullseye on your back, you're only going to get so many fastballs in the strike zone. Like to, to have the production that he's had, the consistency of production that he's had, it tells you how good of a breaking ball hitter he is. Kyle Wilkie is batting over 300 on the season. He's three for eight with an RBI in this regional. Make it three for nine now after grounding out to the shortstop in the second, in second inning. Pops that one foul. Two and one. They say Beer could be the first round pick. There's been a lot of chatter the last few days about the Red Sox tomorrow drafting him in the first round. It makes a lot of sense to me, especially for American League club. I, I think there's, you know, there's some legitimate questions about can he play outfield in the big leagues, but well, I think the hit tool is a no doubter. On the ground, picked up by Valenti as time. Wide throw, but did keep his right foot on the bag. And the side is retired. Seth Beer gets Clemson on the board, doing what he does for the 22nd time this season. St. John's three, Clemson one. Jeff Belge made the one mistake to Beer, but a really productive four innings so far. Ed Blankmeyer, the head coach of the Red Storm, joins us now. And, Coach, your bats have come to life since yesterday. Yes, they have. Uh, I thought we put some good swings on Hennessy early. Now we have to make an adjustment to this kid Miller. He's got a nice uh, sinking fastball and a nice slider. So let's see how we can adjust. Coach, obviously a difficult scenario. What, what's ahead of you to try to get through th this regional? What's the message to the team early in the day when you know what's in front of you? It just survive in advance. You know, you know, we're going to play 54 outs today, play each pitch, and then whatever happens, happens. We'll roll it up again, hopefully. I know you love this team. They've been fighting so hard for you all season. Best of luck, Coach. Thanks, guys. feels like this St. John's team, as much as any that have made the NCAA tournament, are a bunch of overachievers. Not to say they don't have talent, but if you look at some of the teams, like the team that made the Super Regionals six years ago, there are more pros on that team than, than this one, yet these guys just love the game of college baseball. Yeah, and, and maybe not as talented as some, as some of the teams from a position player standpoint, but they got some really good arms. And it's a, it's a nice lineup. Now, again, are there any big leaguers in this lineup? Uh, probably not. But for college baseball standards, this is a nice, a very nice roster that Ed Blankmeyer's put together. And Wyatt Mascarella drops it in front of Sam Hall in left field with an opening fourth inning base hit. He won the Big East for the ninth time this season. Ed Blankmeyer has been to 10 of the last 15 mm. NCAA tournaments. It's their 37th appearance. And that's eighth all time. They've been to the NCAA tournament yeah. as much as Oklahoma and USC. It's pretty crazy. And St. John's, I mean, they have the respect of the country. Everybody knows if you play St. John's, you're going to have to play great baseball to have a chance to beat them in a series. And Ed Blankmeyer is not afraid to put together a really tough non-conference schedule. And that's why they're always so tough in the tournament. See Brandon Miller at the plate, pinch hitting for Boselli, and he grounds into a double play as Chris Williams keeps his foot on the back. This doesn't get any more tailor-made than this one right here, 4-6-3. I thought maybe Williams' foot came off the base. Steve Manley 
gives him the benefit of the doubt. But, boy, it looked like Williams' right foot. Watch your right foot here. Tough to tell. Maybe it was just on right when he caught it. Call goes the Tigers' way, and just like that, a leadoff runner erased. I don't think he's on the base there, Bob. What you got? The first angle we saw, I'd like to see maybe one more time. They, it was close. See this, see this right foot here. Hard to tell if there's space between the foot and the bag there. I thought that last one showed us, but good looks, guys. That was certainly a, a tough play to call. St. John's didn't put up much of a fight about it. I'll save this for the radio, but there is a tangent I could go off on on how replay would be great at all in every college baseball game. We'll have it at the Super Regionals and then, of course, in the College World Series as well. But overall, the I think the big picture comment is that the growth of college baseball is alive and well. I mean, oh, we are no we are gaining on it every single year, which is which is great. So I'm telling myself right now, patience, Taylor. It's coming. <laughs> Gillerman strikes out. Ryan Miller's been great out of the pen. Clemson down two. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. St. John's 3, Clemson 1 on a hot and humid Sunday afternoon in the upstate. The Tigers' season is on the line against Jeff Belge, who's looked strong through four innings. He's only given up one hit. It left the yard. It was a Seth Beer home run. Dealing with Wharton, Green, and Hawkins here in the fifth. I think the thing I've been most impressed with Belge, I kind of, I don't know, I, I kind of had this picture of him, just grab that four-seamer and heave it in there and change speeds occasionally. But he's pitching, man. He's really pitching. First, pe first pitch, off speed there, right right down the middle. I mean, he's landed the changeup and the breaking ball. And then, he, then that 90-mile-an-hour fastball really plays up. That's pop foul. And as we were talking about that eye condition with his right eye, I mean, just one more thing to consider with that. As he is starting his windup, the eye that he doesn't have much vision in, the right eye, is the one that's closest to the mitt. Mm -hmm. So his left eye, his good eye, is further away. Yeah. And it's just remarkable that he would have this kind of success. It's just overcoming a lot. Well, they one and two. They said he was a heck of a high school hitter. Hit a whole bunch of homers. We saw him taking practice swings. And, of course, he's number seven. And so before the first game of the regional, I'm, I'm seeing him take practice swings. I'm over there just watching him because the body and the bat, they're, everything's moving properly. And you're saying, who's Mickey Mantle over there? And I'm looking at the there? roster, and he's like, oh, left-handed pitcher. Wait a second. They said the other day that they were taking extra BP, and he begged them for a couple swings, said that he, he'd hit one out in five. He said his second swing he launched in the bullpen. I, I, so then I had to remind the coaches if they had seen the Todd Peterson story from last week in the SEC baseball tournament. They had. Well, maybe, maybe he's your guy. Sophomore from Syracuse, New York. It was great in the Big East tournament and looks really strong. And Clemson in the regionals. Sixth strikeout. Latest is on Wharton. Now, if you're not in the driver's seat like Vanderbilt, it means trouble. 81% if you win the first two games like the Doors did. If you win the first, lose the second like Clemson did, 12%. If you lose the first game like St. John's did, 7%. And that, of course, since the format was adopted in 1999, as Jordan Green comes to the plate with one out here in the fifth. 
but as you would say, that you need to put a little bit of an asterisk next to Clemson because most of those teams that lost game two were not at home right. in yeah. that situation. Yeah, the, the home team doesn't completely fit that statistic, but they're a part of that statistic. Either way, you, you want to win that 1-0 game. Who do you think is best equipped, given what you've seen in the last 48 hours, to beat Vandy twice? Well, I mean, Clemson's the easy answer to that. I think Clemson has some some real depth from a pitching standpoint. And as good as St. John's pitching staff has been, you know, you start to get – it starts to get a little thin at this point in time after Belge. But – you know, I tell you, St. John's' offense is is playing at a higher level right now than Clemson's. And in some regards, you, you might say that their offense is tougher to pitch to right now. Now, still overall, I think I'd take Clemson just because I feel like they've got higher-end arms left. Green hits that one a ton all the way to the wall in left field. And Jordan's got two bags. That'll get the home crowd hooting and hollering, waiting for something to cheer, trying to rush him in with a heater. And Green gets the barrel to a ball that Bell just didn't quite get to the inside corner. And now Clemson with a scoring opportunity. What we got there? What's the sleeve say today? What we got? Good vibe tribe. Now that's strong. Good vibe tribe. Yep. Right. Chris Brown's going to come have a meeting with Jeff Belge. What, what was it yesterday about dreams? Dream with me. Yep. Good vibe tribe. Clemson needs some of those. Uh, Jordan Green's a neat kid. I, I would imagine he's the captain of the good vibe tribe. But, yeah, you, you – you need some good vibes, man. There's a lot in front of you here. And, and again, we, we keep talking about how daunting the task is. Of course, if you're in the middle of it, all you can do is put your head down and try to do the best with what's right in front of you. You start looking at the mountain, it gets pretty tough to climb. Green had the walk-off hit on Friday night to beat Moorhead State. And he started that hashtag, too, for Dylan. A six-month-old that lives nearby that has an incurable disease and his, he had heard the story about Dylan, the six-month-old's little older brother, raising $6,000 through a lemonade stand campaign to pay for medical bills. And he was so moved by that family story that a lot of his teammates have joined on. Justin Hawkins with Green down there at second base takes strike one. Oh, come on! Come on, Blue. Give the Bears a chance. Belge with a breaking ball ahead in the count. He's being doing that consistently with every hitter. Yeah, he's just done a nice job of changing speeds. And again, you know, he pulls the string on the changeup. He's, he's shown you a good breaking ball, and then he elevates that fastball. It's a, it's a tough combination. Didn't mean to, and that's a fair ball. As Stample steps on the bag, Green goes down to third, two down. That's a frustrating out if you're a hitter. Check swing that stays fair. And you can start to feel a little tension in the building. Taylor, this is, they, they know Belge hadn't given them a whole lot of opportunities, so you get two outs and a runner on third base. feel like this is one Clemson needs to convert. Sam Hall, the left fielder, 0 for 1. He struck out 
in the third inning. Has a chance to drive in green here and make it a one-run game. Ball one. Sam was 0 for 2 with a run scored and a walk last night. But has been struggling at the plate. He's batting under 200 since the beginning of the month of May. One and one. Bells just keeps challenging. I mean, they're, they're, you just don't get the sense that he's worried about contact. There's, there's no look of really trying to nibble. He does a nice job of trusting his stuff. Clemson had a 3-0 advantage against Vanderbilt last night in the winner's part of this region before Vanderbilt scored four unanswered to win the game. Vandy waiting on the winner of this one tonight at 6 Eastern. As that is ball three just low and away. And this is where if you're Sam Hall, you need to really try to take advantage of a hitter's count and try to get the barrel out. We've seen him foul off a lot of fastballs. Try to move your contact point forward. Swung through that, three and two. And Belge doesn't look like he's pitching around him with the lefty on deck. Came right at him with a 3-1 heater. Again, I think if you're, you're Hall, you, you got to get the barrel out in front right here. In there, called strike three. Jeff Belge gets out of trouble in the fifth. He has been on point today, striking out seven Clemson Tigers. He's done it to Sam Hall twice. That was filthy, dude. Clemson Trail St. John's three to one. And we visit now with Monty Lee, the head coach of the Clemson Tigers. Coach, uh, I know that it's time to get going on offense. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is his belge is really good. I mean, this guy could pitch on Friday nights for a lot of teams in our league. Um, he's, he's awfully good up to 93 with a good fastball and a changeup. Bottom line is we got to lay out the pitch above the belt. Right now we're chasing way too many pitches up, in the strike, uh, up above the strike zone. Coach, a big environment last night. You guys have a disappointing loss. Obviously now three straight years you guys have hosted. I'm sure your team feels the weight of that. How do you try to balance the magnitude of the moment with also keeping these guys loose? Well, we just try to do everything we can to keep these guys loose and put them in the right frame of mind to compete today. That's all we can really worry about. We're not worried about the past. We're not. We're trying our best not to worry about last night, even though it was very difficult, as you know. Uh, but uh, bottom line is, is, is we just got to try to take care of today. Coach, best of luck here in this one. We appreciate it. All right, thanks. All right, Mike Antico singled, and he almost got caught napping too close to second base as Valeni hit it into center field, one down. That's all you can do, man. That's it. I mean, you know, in media, we want these profound answers, but the truth is, it was like we were talking about it. You start staring at the mountain, and it feels impossible to get to the top. All you can do is today. All you can do is game one. All you can do is pitch one. And sometimes in the media we get tired of the, the cliche-sounding answers, but that's really all you can do is focus on today, try to win the first one, see what happens if you're able to advance. But they, they're in a dogfight, and, and as I told you, Taylor, they were very aware of what they were up against here with Jeff Belge. Jamie Gallison doubled and singled on a bunt in the third. This back through the box could be two. David, what a flip. That was beautiful. Do it, young man. This doesn't come without of a bunch of reps. How about the glove flip? Perfectly fed. Green finishes it on the backside. Tigers looking for some energy. Maybe that's the play that sparks it. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One on a beautiful, hot, sunny day in Clemson, South Carolina. 
Here's the bracket. Last night, Vanderbilt knocked off the Tigers at home here for the second straight time to put them in the regional final. They wait on the winner of this game we're watching in front of us, and that's at 6 Eastern tonight. And the winner of this game has to beat Vandy twice. Loser season is over. Vanderbilt in rarefied air going to the same regional spot and winning, trying to win in consecutive seasons. That's never happened before. It'd be pretty special. They, they got the pitching staff to do it. The, the offense is doing just enough, getting contributions up and down the order. Game one, we saw Jason Gonzalez, the nine-hole hitter, hit an oppo homer last night. It was Ethan Paul with a, with a monster two-run homer. And the back end of the bullpen, spectacular. Jeff Belge has been pretty sporty himself as he gets a little pat on the back from Valenti that you saw there a second ago. Now he's got to deal with the top of the Clemson order, Kier Meredith, who struck out twice in his first start in six weeks, followed by Logan Davidson and Seth Beer. Thought about putting one down and takes now, an 88 mile an hour for strike now one. Now, to me, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, I think against a big, big power lefty, Bring it, bringing a drag bunt with you is a great idea, but that was the pitch to do it on. There it is. I don't know why he took the first one. That one actually looked like a tougher pitch to do it on than the first one. I like the idea, though. Bring that thing with you and try to beat the pitcher to the bag, and that's basically what you're doing. Oh, two. Strike three. Three strikeouts from Belge against Meredith. He's got eight in the game. Well, it was a, it was a curious decision to start the game and one that has definitely not paid off for Monty Lee. Starting the freshman left-handed hitter who hadn't played a ton. Three punch outs out of the leadoff spot in front of your two big hitters. Mm, starting in one thing, leading him off another. Cromwell has been struggling at third base. They took him out of the lineup today. Now Logan Davidson, who's 0 for 2. He was on base four times last night. I tell you, the way Belge is going, and we know how good St. John's bullpen is, that these two guys might only get two more shots. This and one more. So these are really big at bats. been a really fulfilling year for Logan Davidson and his father Mark who Mark of course also played here and was a great college and pro player came back to receive his degree this season and serve as a student assistant that's an awesome story I understand they've had a lot of back and forth discussion about grades this yeah, year too about late night cram sessions when you're Decades removed from college. Something tells me that the classroom looks a little different today than when, when Mark was there. I don't think Mark, Logan's dad, felt too good about that strike call. I'm out of here. <laughs> Full count. That must be so tough to watch your son on a 3-2 pitch with one out in the sixth. Popped it up. Valenti near his dugout. Can't make a play on the roof. It's that fine line. We know Belge loves to pitch up in the strike zone with the fastball. But Davidson, who has a really flat path, that, that's a pitch that he could certainly drive one out of here on. And you got him in swing mode now with 3-2. Let's see if he sticks with the heater or 
tries to get a swing and miss or maybe freeze him on a breaking ball. Inside, ball four, and Davidson's aboard in front of Beer. Last at bat in the fourth inning. Got himself a breaking ball, and we know what he does with those in the zone. That's a no doubt at the right center field. Seth Beer, two hits in this regional, both of them home runs, and boy would they love another one right here as he stands in fourth place right now in the country in home runs for this season. How about Cody Clemens on there, the second baseman, did two more yesterday for the Longhorns. His parents, Roger and Debbie, watching. Strike one. They had Roger on the broadcast yesterday. Tom Hart texted me and said, Roger was great. He was fantastic. I said, he's the rocket. He's always great. I mean, like, what would you expect? He's the rocket. I mean, do you think he was going to be a dud? We had a good laugh about him. <laughs> you know he's proud of Cody Clemens. Here's Beer, like Clemens, one of the best power hitters you'll see. Three-time All-American. And as we've been saying throughout this weekend, that I mean, he has hit a couple of home runs, but some postseason success is the one more check mark he needs to make in his collegiate career. One and two, and, it, and when I say postseason success, I mean team success. He's sure, done his yeah, part. yeah, no doubt. I, I was, I was thinking the same thing. And Bell stays with that fastball up above the belt. I think you got to crowd him right here. I think this is where you try to throw that four seamer just off his front hip. There's a little bit of space in there. Setting up in. There it is. Got him. That's Perfect the pitch. pitch. Ninth strikeout for Belge. And that's where you have to go. And how about executing in a huge moment against an All-American hitter, left on left, just dotting up a four-seamer right on the inside edge. That is a beautiful pitch to erase beer and work around, trying to work around that walk to Logan Davidson. Williams is no easy out either. Chris has had a terrific year. He's 0 for 2 today, 17 home runs on the season. Yeah, this is where you need a big swing from your senior. I mean, at some point, it, again, if Clemson's going to make a, a run in this regional, they they got to have their dudes come up with some big swings. Beer's already hit a homer to put them on the board, and boy, they'd love to see Williams catch fire like we saw from him last week in the ACC tournament. And now he's got a hitter's count. He had kind of a slow start in March and April, but his – Turned it on since. He hit that three-run home run in the ACC tournament. Hit four home runs in total in the month of May. Man. And that's it. That, that fastball, they just can't quite get to the middle of it. We've seen a ton of foul balls. It just shows you the life that, that Belge has on his heater. Fastball and a fastball count to a veteran hitter. And gets away with it. Okay, so 3-1 count. Probably thinking fastball is coming. Tell me about Williams' approach here. Well, he's got to look out over the plate. I don't think he's going to get anything in here on a 3-1 count. Try to get something below your belly button. See if you can't hit it out to right center field. Instead, it's away. And for the first time today, the Tigers have two aboard. St. John's bullpen now is going to get to work. Michael Lopresti, the right-hander. 96 pitches for Belge. Maybe showing the first signs of fatigue. Two walks in this inning. Yeah, we've seen we've seen more 
misses that were way out of the zone. Oh, boy, I love it out. George Brown likes to keep it loose when he goes out there. Just has a really good way about him. We saw Scott Brown go to the mound last night and had everybody on the Vanderbilt. Man, I got to ask him about that today. He said something funny, everybody man. Everybody was laughing. Yeah. George, of course, used to be the pitching coach at Vanderbilt and went up to Queens to work for Coach Plankmeyer. Flop that, that yeah. flip that back. Scott around. Brown worked with Blake Meyer. I went the other Brown. He went. He went to work for Coach Corbin. But you, you had the name. Did the last I name had the Browns right? right. I mean, I was due for one <laughs> big slip at some point. So the funny man came from Queens to Nashville. Yes, that's right. Got it. That's right. I'm with you now. Now you're on it. Okay. Good That's save. a bold strategy to move from Nashville to Queens. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Kyle Wilkie, 0 for 2 today. Batting 317 on the season coming into today's action. Looking for that big hit. Strike one. He's batting close to 400 in the last 35 days where the season has gotten so important. Clemson dominated ACC play this year, tying for the regular season title, winning the Atlantic Division. Really good numbers in this spot all year. 0-2. Oh Fastball down and away. Change up down and away. And after the visit by George Brown, he has recovered nicely. Two really big pitches. Davidson's at second, Williams at first. Wilkie at the plate in an 0-2 hole with the Johnnies up two in the sixth. Nice pitch right there. Just grab that four seamer. Still got enough life. 91 miles an hour there. 100 pitches in the ball game. Still got some juice on the heater. Change up here, I think. Oh, went fastball again. Still trust the fastball. The two, two fastballs up in the zone. You'd think you probably have some room to pull the string on a, on a change up right here. That was the 100th pitch of the game. He's tied his career high with nine strikeouts. Goes away, one and two. And tried to break the ball there. You know, the, the other pitch that, that he's thrown today that is a really well-executed pitch was the, the fastball in that got him off the field last inning to Hall. And he stayed away this entire at-bat. wonder if he tries to jam that one in there again, see if he can lock Wilkie up. Belgium approaching his career high with the pitch count. It's 108. About to be five away from that. There it is. And there somehow is. that missed. And he wanted it, but I think Jeff Macias got it right. This one looked like 
It was just off the edge. Trying to lock him up with that heater in. Yup, tugs it just a little bit. Look at the glove from Mascarella. That one's just off the plate. And now a huge full count pitch right here. Two on, two out. Clemson down two. Full count in the sixth. We'll do it again. It's only the third time Jeff's ever gone over 100 pitches in his career. Ball still has plenty of life on it, though. You can see him sweating. He's that's a, it's a hundred pitches in the South Carolina heat. Let's see if he's got one more big one inning. Hit deep to left field. Antico over his head. Two runs will score. Tie game in Clemson. That's what they've been waiting for. This crowd been ready to explode. Finally, one of their dudes comes up with a big swing. Belge out there battling his tail off, trying to get him off the field. Leaves a fastball middle, middle, and a bullet off the left field wall by Kyle Wilkie. And the home crowd loves it. Belge disappointed. We got ourselves a new ball game. Wilkie has been a machine at the plate just over the last month, batting 400. And that's one of the biggest hits of the year. Jeff Belge was dominant in the first five innings, maybe ran out of gas in the sixth. He'll give way to the bullpen here in a tie game in the sixth inning. Jeff Belge pacing the dugout. He just gave up a two-run double. Now 3-3 in this elimination game here in the Clemson Regional. Take you back to this last at-bat. Kyle Wilkie frozen on a fastball in that's just off the corner. Belge wanted it. Call doesn't go his way. And 3-2 leaves one out and over the plate. And the big swing of the bat that Monty Lee and the Tigers have been waiting for is delivered by Kyle Wilkie. He was outstanding for most of this start with those nine strikeouts. Retired the first seven batters he faced. Didn't give up a hit until the fourth, the home run to Beer. But in trouble now as Michael Lopresti tries to end the inning, keeping the game tied, the junior from Wayne, New Jersey. Been one of their starters all year long, but Obviously, all hands on deck here in an elimination game. Drew Wharton struck out twice against Belge. Had a big cut there. Winner gets Vanderbilt at 6 Eastern time. Loser season is over. Mascarella can't control it. Wilkie's 90 feet away. Oh, Presty really yanked that breaking ball. See Mascarella disappointed that he wasn't able to corral it. He goes with the backhand. I guess that's all he had there. Felt like that was just too far away to get around. And you know, Le Presty, who is used to coming in as a or starting the game, now comes in as a reliever trying to find his stuff here in a big situation.
Good stop by Mascarella, two and two. Telepresti just trying to run that sinker down and in. 92 there with that fastball. Sinker slider guy. Gets a lot of ground ball outs. Pop foul. As you were saying, this is a unique situation for Lopresti, who they've counted on to be consistently a starter, not only throughout this season, but throughout his entire career. He's only made eight appearances in three seasons out of the bullpen. 36 starts. And now another full count. And there's, there's good life on the baseball. It's just a matter of, of commanding it right now. The misses have been pretty big, which tells you maybe the heart's beating pretty fast. Hit into left field, 4-3 Tigers. Well, it can be contagious. Wilkie delivers the monster hit, the batter before. Now Wharton with a liner in the six hole. Jeff Belge stands to lose this game, which 30 minutes ago would have seemed impossible. Green doubled his last time up. He had the walk-off hit on Friday night that gave Clemson a 4-3 win. The Tigers lost 4-3 to Vanderbilt last night. And here we are in another 4-3 game on Sunday. Well, the captain of the Good Vibe Tribe has got some good vibes going right now. This is, this is the best vibes we've felt in the ballpark in a while since the first inning yesterday. <laughs> The good vibe tribe. But Presti just can't find that breaking ball. Hadn't hadn't really been close with it. And, and the last thing you want to do is turn into a one pitch guy against a lineup as talented as Clemson's. Red Storm have not scored since the first inning. Josh Shaw with a two-run homer. Luke Stamfel followed him with a bomb. It was three-zip. Clemson got one on a Seth Beer homer in the fourth. And now three more here in the sixth. First the two-run double by Wilkie and then the RBI single by Wharton. And now a 2-0 count on Jordan Green. Keep the good vibes going. Find yourself in a hitter's count. Green with the double last time. Wouldn't be surprised if we see another good swing from him right here. a walk-off home run earlier this season. We mentioned the Moorhead State walk-off single the other night. Clemson has six of those walk-off hits this year. They have won and lost one run game so far in this regional, three and one. And they are 15 and six in these types of situations all year. In fact, it feels like Monty Lee's teams are always in this position. He is 38 and 16 in one run games in three years. That one's hit the center field. 
Gal is in and stops in front of him and over to third goes Wharton. Keep the good vibes flowing. Jordan Green with the top spinning liner into center field. Looked like Gallison was going to have a play on it. But this ball kind of nosedives into center field. I don't know if Green thought he was out or what, but he didn't really get out of the box on that ball. Wharton was running the whole way. He cruises into third. Tigers keep it going here with two outs. Justin Hawkins 0 for 1 with a walk today. As a frustrated Jeff Belge can only look on. Grayson Bird instead will pinch hit for Hawkins. Bird, the transfer from LSU. He's had a huge surge of power this season. Son of former major leaguer Paul Bird. Yeah, he's turned himself into a really dangerous hitter. Watching him in BP today, he was launching balls over the left center field wall with ease. And that can't be stopped by Mascarella. It's 5-3 Clemson. Over at third base, Green is out as he delayed his decision to go to third base. And fortunately for St. John's, the inning ends in that fashion, but not before Clemson scores four times. Yeah, they had him on the ropes. They get a freebie here with the wild pitch, but Green, slight hesitation, costs him by an inch. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. The Clemson Tigers catch fire in the sixth. They lead five to three as Josh Shaw grounds it to Logan Davidson. One pitch, one out in the bottom of the sixth. I don't like it. Sit out there and sweat for 20 minutes. Come out there and make a first pitch out. I just, again, that's, that's a hitter having a great day, and I guess you trust him right there, but... Sometimes you got to have a team at bat. Give yourself a chance to maybe let your guy Lepresti catch his breath. Brocato takes a strike. <laughs> Hits that one, and a nice play is made by Green, playing him perfectly. Three pitches, two outs. Yeah. Here you are, just like that. Grayson Bird, who just pinch hit for Justin Hawkins, stays in the game at third. Tigers open it up. Kier Meredith struck out to start the sixth inning. Davidson walked. Beer struck out. Yeah. It was one on, two outs in the sixth when all that damage was done. First, Williams walks. Wilkie. At, took a borderline 2-2 pitch that was called ball three, then doubles to tie the game up. Wharton singles to give them the lead. Green scores, and then Wharton, rather, scores on a wild pitch. And all of a sudden, it's 5-3, but again, two outs, down 3-1, and you score four runs. Yeah, i tell you, when you said he strikes out beer, it, that feels like a while ago when he made that pitch to get rid of beer. At that point in time, you kind of like the Johnny spot. I was thinking that was a big momentum swing for Jeff Belge in St. John's, but four more runs came across for Clemson, and suddenly they're in the driver's seat. Ryan Miller's been great out of the pin, but Stanfield squares that one up, and he has his second hit today. And that's a big swing of the bat, a hanging breaking ball to Stanfield just to breathe a little bit. Last thing you want to do is run right back out there and play defense after that four spot they just put on you. And here's Mascarella. 
who singled his last time, hit two home runs in the victory over Moorhead State yesterday. Strike one. Jacob Hennessy started this game, lasted two and a third. And here's Miller, who's been pitching to contact rather effectively with two outs in the sixth. Strike two. Yeah, Miller has not had much trouble with his right-handed heavy lineup. You almost wonder if things would look different right now if he'd have started this ball game. But he has done a heck of a job, and you got to credit Monty Lee for going to him early. Mm. Jeff Macias, the home plate umpire, has been delayed in showing you whether he thought that was a ball or a strike all day. And was came it came out of the crouch, and I guess he thought it was up. Uh, up would be, I mean, split the play. <laughs> See some other scores from college baseball. Troy, the lead on the Georgia Bulldogs right now. That is not an elimination game, by the way. That's a two winners that are 1-0 and oh, as it's 2-2. Two and two. Mississippi State and Samford down in Tallahassee in an elimination game. The, the Dolphins of Jacksonville got a chance to be eliminated down 5 to nothing. Still early in that one, though. St. Louis as a 4 seed trying to win a ball game against Missouri State. That one at Swayze Field in Oxford. Here it's a 2 2. Mascarella knows he just missed one right there. That could have been a tie ball game on that pitch. Barrel just a little below the baseball. in the air. Wharton moves over, calls Beer off, and the side is retired. The Clemson Tigers are three outs away. St. John's pitcher Jeff Belge tied a career high with nine strikeouts, but then the Clemson Tigers' bats woke up. First, Kyle Wilkie with a double to tie the game at three. Then Drew Wharton singles after they chase Belge out of the game. He's disappointed because his Red Storm had a 3-0 lead. Clemson has scored five unanswered. Yeah, boy, it was looking really good there for a period of time. And still plenty of ball game left. But Clemson, the, the, their prospects look a lot better right now than they did about 20 minutes ago. Grayson Bird gets another chance at the plate after the wild pitch got away from Wyatt Mascarella. Scoring Drew Wharton, but Jordan Green trying to take two bases was a race down at third, so a fresh count. Be interesting to see how Monty Lee handles his bullpen from here on out. You got your closer, your All American closer, and Riley Gilliam. Spires is obviously, he ran the tank out last night. Matt Clark has pitched a couple times already. Spencer Strider, they. They want to hold to start against Vanderbilt. So you got Marr, you got Millers out here already extended himself. So where do they go here to get these last nine outs? Two innings, maybe three for Gilliam. Well, I think two, right? It'd be hard to throw him more than two and then have him pitch again tonight. Right. So, you know, most most coaches operate under. We'll, we'll worry about the next game when we get to it. But two-run lead at, at home. Obviously, you're not the home team, but, you know, the balance of making sure we win this game and still trying to 
have enough arms left to potentially win the regional is a, is a tough one to figure out. Bird walks, I'm sure Coach would say, I've got another idea. How about the bats just go crazy? Yes. And then you don't have to worry about it. Well, Lepresti's definitely looks vulnerable right now. You wonder how much longer Ed Blankmeyer is going to stick with him. This, this might be it for him. It is. And see, we'll go back to the pin once again. Turner French coming in out of the pin to replace Lopresti with one on, nobody out in the seventh inning. Tigers up two. SEC teams 15 and 3 through the first two days, just a dominant season. You could say it's the most dominant, dominant year any conference has ever had. It tied the record for teams, and then their performance in this tournament has been remarkable. Cody Clemens all over the Aggies, though, yesterday. Those great aces, they're going to hear their names called on Monday night, have been terrific. And that bottom line, Berkey, is the most shocking to me. Yeah, it's shocking. The fact that they, they lost two games, it's shocking how they lost with, with losing on a walk-off three-run homer. And, and I think a lot of people, including me, were shocked that Drew Paris came back after a two-and-a-half-hour break. There was, a, there was a lot to digest with that ball game. Turner French first pitch. Sam Hall has a base hit. Had been struggling at the plate. And the Tigers have something going again in the seventh. Turner French did not pitch well against Moorhead State, and he that's not the start he was looking for here. Already giving up five hits in this regional. And they're, they're showing him a lot of trust here. Obviously, you got the lefty coming up with Meredith, and then Davidson, you turn around, and then Beer. But it has not been pretty to this point in the regional for French. Faced four batters, French did, yesterday and gave up a, a base hit to every single one of them. Infield playing in, waiting on that Meredith bunt, but that buzzed the tower, 2-0. I'm surprised we haven't seen Hollowell as good as he looked closing that game out yesterday. Joe Kelly, you just saw warming up, did look good in that game against Moorhead State. 3 0. Pitches. He walks Gear Meredith, and the bases are loaded. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, LHN, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage also available through ESPN3 and the bases loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. Now Logan Davidson with the bases loaded in the seventh inning and nobody out. Clemson trailed in this game 3-0. They were down 3-1 in the last inning with two outs and two strikes. Now all of a sudden they have a chance to break it wide open. Yeah, this is definitely danger zone for the Red Storm. Yes. To right field, Brocato makes the catch. Tagging is Bird. Play at the plate. 
out. Wow. What a turn of events. Just when you think Clemson's going to blow the game out, Bracado gets behind the baseball and rips it. Doesn't even worry about the cutoff, man, and gets burned by an eyelash at the plate. A bullet all the way in the air to home, and Mascarella gets burned right on the back as the hand gets in there. And the decision to send Bird with beer coming up cost the Tigers an out. What a play. And meanwhile, Hall and Meredith did not move up. Here is Seth Beer at the plate. French has to be careful with him already a homer today. Yeah, ideally right there, Hall reads the throw and sees that it has no chance to hit the cutoff, man, and he goes at the same time. And you force Mascarella to either come up and try to make the out at third or stay home and try to get the force or the tag play at home. Backside runners get caught watching the play. Nobody else advances. Those two hits both have left the yard, including one today in the fourth inning that got Clemson on the board. Be very careful right here. This is where he might go backside homer on you. Hits it the opposite way, and that is a foul ball. He's just so good at staying in there. It's a good catch, too. Nice play. Nice play by the fan. That's why you bring your glove, man. Yeah, bring your glove. Make a play. And look, played it pretty cool afterwards, too. Yeah, he really did. Smile. Shagging flies. Oh, nice. Back up to the seats. Get back in the shade now, man. Get Mission a, accomplished. Getting a standing ovation out there in left field. I got to go show mom. No, that's not mom. Oh, dad. I got to go talk to dad about it. There we go. Just caught a ball from Seth Beer. Hand stinging a little bit, baby. Look at it. <laughs> it is stinging. Imagine playing second base when he's up. Mm. Might have to go to Berkey's camp, teach you where to put your <laughs> hand in that glove. 2 1. Swings through it. And French really hadn't shown as much of a breaking ball. Beer got caught in between there, maybe looking for a breaking ball. French throws a fastball right by him. Gets away, and now each runner comes up 90 feet. Not sure what happened right there. That pitch wasn't that far out of the strike zone. Mascarella, I don't know if they got crossed up. They're not talking about it. Mascarella just whiffed it. You're throwing the strike right here? First base open? No, sir. Ball four, base is loaded. And it's Chris Williams who comes to the plate 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored today. You got to make a move here. And Ed Blankmeyer will. Joe Kelly, the sidewinders coming in to try to put out the fire and keep the Red Storm in it. Red Storm just used some great defense. Joe Kelly was the recipient of some of it yesterday. The old 5-2-3 double play. Yeah, came in a big spot where it looked like Morehead State was maybe going to get right back in the ball game. 
Got a couple ground balls. Got the Johnnies off the field, and that's what he's there to do is induce the ground ball. Sidearm right-hander that has a pretty nice sinker. He will face Chris Williams, who walked and scored in the sixth. Chris has been kind of quiet in this series. Two for eight after 17 home runs in the regular season and a three-run bomb in Durham at the ACC tournament last weekend. Ball one. Well, that's Sam Hall down at third, Kier Meredith at second, and Seth Beer at first. After another meeting of the minds between Mascarella and Kelly. Yeah, and for me, when you're facing the side armors, you got to look away. They, they want you to come over the top of the sinking fastball that runs in on your hand. So the best place to look is out over the plate because that one's the one that's going to run back middle. Good little Frisbee slider right there. Not a ton of side to side on that, but kind of acted like a changeup. Just a little low. Something up in the air, or excuse me, something up in the zone that you got a chance to drive into a gap right here. Jammed him two and two. Well, this just kind of feels like the whole game hinges on this pitch. Base hit by Clemson. You got to really like their spot. Kelly can get him off the field right here. St. John's is still very much in this ball game. Williams dumps it in front of Antico. Two-run score, 7-3 Tigers. And the stars from Clemson continued to deliver. It was Wilkie, and then, of course, Wharton tacked on one last inning. This inning, Williams comes up with the big hit. A slider down and away. He does a nice job. Watch him extend the barrel here. Release the top hand, hand and extend the barrel out in front. Just enough of that baseball to dump it into left field. Well, Kelly unable to do his job, and Coach Blankmeyer will make another pitching change with Clemson up 7-3. to three. Coach Blankmeyer has gone through three relievers in this inning, brought in Michael Lopresti relieving Jeff Bell last inning, and the guys in front of Gavin Hollowell have not been able to do their job. No, I, you know, Turner French was not successful yesterday. He struggled again in this ball game. Almost got him out of it. Kelly comes in and gives up a two RBI single, and now you give the ball to Hollowell, and I just think it begs the question, should you have gone here first? Hollowell yesterday pitched an inning in two-thirds, struck out two, facing six batters. You know, to me, there's there's two schools of thought. One is, look, if we're going to win this thing, we got three games left to play. I, I don't want Hollowell to have to throw three innings in this one, and then he's spent. But 
I think Blankmeyer got to a point now where if they're going to keep this game at all within reach, he's got to go to his best arm. And maybe regretting that he didn't go to him right away because, again, yeah, you got to win three more games, but if you don't win this one, there is no more baseball left to play. So I, you could, you could, I could argue both sides of it. But I think especially with the struggles of French yesterday, I think in hindsight, going right to Hollowell is probably their best chance to win this one. Meanwhile, Wilkie had the at-bat of the game so far. Tying it up in the last inning. Takes ball two. Red Storm scored three in the first inning. And I've watched Clemson score seven unanswered. And he went around as it stays in the glove. Clemson tacks on a couple more up 7-3. The NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. On a beautiful day here in Clemson, South Carolina, the Tigers have exploded. Six runs in the last two innings. They now have a four-run lead and are in complete command of this game, Taylor. That was well done. I might go down to Lake Hartwell while you call the rest of this one. Okay. Ryan Miller three and two thirds innings, four hits no walks, two strikeouts He's been the story really from, from the pitching side of things I mean, he, he took the ball and the Johnnies were red hot and basically since he's towed the rubber he has put a stranglehold on this St. John's offense Brandon Miller always faces right-handers and he rips that one down the right field line but only can get one back. What about Seth Beer? I tell you, Monty Lee will tell you that Seth Beer has done a very nice job in right field. Does a good job with his pivot there and he's shown us a pretty big arm. They tried to play him at first base last year. That just didn't work. He definitely looks comfortable out there and right. Gillerman is struck out twice. And Wilkie tries to find it, locates it, one out. Never easy to look up into that sunshine on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, Wilkie didn't know where it was, and you heard the whole dugout, the pitcher, Miller, everybody making sure he realized that ball was in play. Antico singled in the fifth. Strike one. Yeah, people are tuning in and out or just maybe read a little bit about the game. They'll see that the Tigers exploded in the sixth, got a couple more in the seventh. But Ryan Miller deserves as much credit as Antico flies out to left field. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Yeah, I mean, for me, he's the MVP of this game. Yeah, Wilkie got the, the big swing that they desperately needed, but none of it would matter, or at least wouldn't be as significant if Miller hadn't been as dominant as he has been.
John Valenti takes ball one in what might be his final at bat for the Red Storm. He's had a nice regional. Has not had a hit today, though. Man, he put a charge into that one and at least one more hit in the Red Storm uniform. This guy was the Big East player of the year. He's the first ever Johnny to do that. Was on the All-Big East team each of the last two seasons. I think he has a real good chance of making that all-tournament team again this year. What was neat is his teammates were reading on Twitter, and they found out that he was the Big East player of the year on the bus. And the whole bus starts yeah. clapping for him. And they told him, hey, man, you're the Big East player of the year. Yeah. And he said that's a moment he'll never forget. Yeah, you could. He's just a real likable kid. And what a story, right? Shows up to St. John's. Wasn't even on the team. How is that possible? Was not on the team. Was not recruited to play baseball at St. John's. And they were tipped off that he was playing in a, in a local area college league the summer after his freshman year. They invited him to be a part of the team. And the rest yeah, is history. Baseline. And Gallison goes to the bag to retire the side. Clemson up four, headed to the eighth. I see fireworks across these regional sites. Jace Chamberlain, first ever career wow. home run, walk-off win. Titans going crazy. Look Rollerton at that pitch. Beat Stanford. Look at that hair. And I don't think Fullerton plays football, but if they did, I would think he played on the O-line. Fullerton now in the driver's seat in that regional. Overall, number two seed has to come out of an elimination game with Baylor in a couple of hours. And then the winner has to beat Fullerton twice. Well, look at the games. Now, is that is that indicative of, of the number two national seed playing a regional where they got to go 12 innings to beat the four seed, and then they get walked off two to one by the, by the two seed? And, look, I just think the problem is if – if you rank it and you have, or excuse me, the three seed, Fullerton, if you rank it, it's 1-64 to 64 and that happens, you go, hey, that's how it fell. You, you didn't play well or those teams played over their head or whatever. But when you look at it and you go, okay, there's no way Wright State's the, the second worst four seed. They're not. Right? And there's no way that, that Fullerton's the second worst three seed, a, a program with that kind of championship pre pedigree. Now, I know their regular season wasn't up to snuff, but still nobody wants to play Stan I mean, uh, Fullerton. It just doesn't feel like Stanford was rewarded for the year that they had. We addressed this yesterday as Wharton walks to lead off the eighth inning that the NCAA basketball tournament seeds all 68 teams. Right. The baseball tournament seeds the top 16 teams, and then they put twos, threes, and fours. They try to consider geography. Yeah. I guess there are some other factors, but they're not putting necessarily team 64 with Florida and team 63 with Stanford. Right. And I'm with you. I think they should. If you're going to do that for basketball, you should do that for baseball. You should do that for all sports. Yeah, and we, we have a chance this year to have two different visiting teams win regionals at the same place they won them out last year. Vanderbilt could do it here in the nightcap tonight, and Fullerton could do it at Stanford out there tonight. And that's never happened before. Right. And you get two teams do it in one year. You, you feel for the host schools. Mm-hmm. But, again, if there's the transparency in 1 through 64. And that's you, the way it falls. And so that's the way it falls, then that's the way it falls. Right. Meanwhile, Georgia's leading Troy as they're just in game four in Athens. They had some weather that pushed that series back a bit. Mississippi State beating Sanford in the elimination game down in Tallahassee. Oklahoma in the driver's seat down there to play the winner of this region. Nice bunt by Green, only play to first. And, and by the way, I, I think we're going that way. Number one, 
the national media has beaten that drum pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Number two, this, to give the committee credit, this is the first year they've done one through 16. I mean, so, you know, maybe some people are kind of walk before you run type of deal, but it feels like we'll get there. No doubt. It's a step in the right direction for sure. And that's exciting, yeah. right? I mean, you think about when you were playing the game, you have to put a bid in. Sometimes the bid wasn't good enough. If you were one of the eight or 16, if you were one of the two, three, eight, 12 best teams in college baseball as a one seed, you still could, might have to go on the road and play at a better facility. Right. That's not happening anymore. No. And, and, and a big reason it's not happening anymore is because there's so many great facilities, which, which speaks to the bigger picture, which is so many more people are investing in the sport, right? The, the tournament and, and the College World Series has never been more profitable than it is now. And so with that, you just, as you've said a couple times, I mean, let's legitimize this thing fully and let's treat it. And you've said it, and I agree completely with you, every tournament they run they should do that way. And... Again, we don't know all the finances. I'm sure there's things we don't completely understand, but talking to Monty Lee about it, we were talking about some of the teams that some of the four seeds that went to some of the regional hosts that those four seeds were were definitely way below the caliber of a right state. And he's like, you know, those administrations, what are they going to not go to the tournament? Mm. They're going to say, well, that's too far away. We're not going. I mean, of course they're going to go. LIU Brooklyn goes to to Conway, right? They they're flying to Myrtle Beach. They they could fly to Palo Alto. I mean, they're flying. I'm sure the tickets are a little more expensive. What, what are they not going to go to a regional? We were talking the other day. I mean, Hartford. I mean, you think of these teams uh, that are making these uh, big trips that don't typically travel that far away. Yeah, there's there is there's finance there's money associated with that and and I'm sure that the pushback would be, well if you just seed the team that way and you never consider geography there's going to be more costs associated but I, you have to spend some to make some right yeah and if you're if you're going to have a, a tournament that a sport that is gone from being almost exclusively a regional sport to a national sport which is what I think college baseball is now. It's one of the things you have to do. I agree. And, and I, I credit the, the college football community for how transparent they've been in selecting their playoff teams. Whether you agree or disagree, they've been transparent. The basketball committee has is, is been trending in that direction as well. And I, I thought Ray Tanner did a great job as a spokesman for the committee, but I, I feel like there's still some tweaks to be made. 3-1, Bird swings through it with Wharton standing and Scoring position. That was a healthy hack there by Grace. Yeah, Burke. it was. <laughs> Reggie Jackson like. Let's go. Let's take a look at this one more time. The you know you're letting it eat when you go to a knee afterwards. That's that's kind of where I got the Reggie Jackson from. Look at that. he's down there. I mean that is empty in the gas tank. Boom. Adrian Belcher is required to do that, right? I think it's in his contract he has to go down to a knee. What a treasure. What a treasure of the game of baseball. I love Belcher that guy. Is. Don't touch his head. 3-2. You ever seen the clip of Adrian Beltre appealing his own check swing? It's so funny. Is he, you know, he check swing yeah. and, he, and he looks at the umpire. He Did, he Did he go? <laughs> Did he go? Did he go? Wow. On his own check swing. <laughs> Guy's a riot. Paul played 14 years, Grayson's dad, in the in the majors, and Grayson was drafted by the Braves in the 39th round, elected to go to the same place his father played college ball and, and transferred from LSU. Pops this one up. And Antico makes the second out of the inning. So bad news for Clemson are that they're two down here. The good news is they have scored six of their seven runs in this situation today. Two out hitting has been terrific. Yeah. 
And that's what it boils down to. You know, talking to Monty Lee this morning after, you know, a close loss last night. I mean, obviously these coaches rack their brain on how, how they can do things differently, how they can manage the game differently. But sometimes it just comes down to do your dudes get big hits. And, you know, last night Vandy got one more big hit than, than Clemson. Sam Hall, one for three today. Two strikeouts and a single. He scored in the seventh. Clemson, 46 and 15 out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. St. John's, the class of the Big East, 40 and 16. That one is pop foul. These two programs have been waving the flag for their respective conferences for a long time. Yeah, I mean, St. John's is obviously one of the premier Northeastern programs in America. I think you can make an argument they are. And Clemson, certainly one of the bell cows of the ACC. A league that's in a bit of a transition. I think, I think Virginia will be back. They had a lot of injuries this year, but it, it's odd having a tournament without Virginia. And, of course, Miami, they're going to have a transition. Jim Morris retiring. And so, you know, some uncertainty around the Miami program. We've now missed the regionals and back-to-back seasons after such a long streak. So the ACC is, is never going to be as prominent without those two programs playing at a high level. Mascarella couldn't hold on to it. Ball one. And, and you wonder how long – you wonder how much longer Mike Martin is coaching at Florida State. You think he's going to be back next season, but I guess you never know. I mean, when you're his age and you've broken the record, and, of course, you know, you're dealing with the sting of defeat. But I'd be shocked if there's – if it's anything other than his own decision not to come back. I mean, how, how could you not stay with a guy that's won that many games and just was in Omaha? Mascarella – he has, still doesn't know where the ball is. And the Tigers score another run. It's at the base of the wall near the first row of seats, and Wyatt could never pick it up, and Wharton scores all the way from second base. It's been a tough day behind the dish for Mascarella. And just trying to backhand balls that he should be locking up, and this one gets away, and nobody's pointing to him. Hollowell knew where it was, and Hollowell right now needs to be pointing. Point. And that's a got to be a lonely feeling if you're Mascarella when you don't know where the ball is. He's a big reason they're in this position. They had not won an NCAA game, tournament game, in three years. He had two home runs yesterday, but he's had a hard time picking up the baseball today. Yes. And the inning continues as Hall walks. Coach Blankmeyer will make another pitching change. He's used five. He'll go to his sixth pitcher of the day. Red Storm led 3-0 at one point. Down five now. Here's the bracket in Clemson. Vandy got the Tigers again, just like last year. Last night, they're waiting the winner of this one. Clemson and St. John's, and Vandy's going to throw the freshman, Mason Hickman, from Hendersonville, Tennessee. Yeah, Hickman is a very polished strike thrower, does a nice job of filling up the zone with quality pitches. I had him in a seven-inning complete game, one to nothing victory against LSU earlier in the year. Another one of these freshmen that Vanderbilt has leaned on all season long to come up big in big moments. Joe LaSorsa, sixth pitcher of the day for the St. John's Red Storm, facing Kier Meredith with two outs. 
sophomore. This is 26th appearance of the season. Saw him yesterday, or two days ago rather, against Vanderbilt. And did a really nice job. Threw breaking balls in the zone. Had a nice sinker. And kept them in the ball game for the back half of that, of that contest. Here goes Hall. That's another stolen base. Clemson has scored seven of their eight runs today with two outs, and they had another one in this inning when the ball got away from Wyatt Mascarella, and Drew Wharton scored all the way from second base. Meredith puts it on the ground. Shaw retires the side. Another run for Clemson. They lead 8-3, middle of the eighth. A little breezy today in Clemson. Nice little Sunday afternoon for a game of catch. ESPN, the, th the thermometer says, was that 98? 97-ish on the field. Winner gets Vanderbilt tonight. Clemson six outs away. Patrick Cromwell checks into the game to play third base. As Ryan Miller is still out there working. Look at that line. He's giving up some hits. He's A lot of balls have been put into play, but... Nothing has been scorched. No, he just a lot of arm side run on the fastball. He's done a really good job, even though he's got all that arm side run, of getting it to the outside part of the plate to the right-handed hitters. And in a lineup that features eight righties, just a really good matchup for Miller. The slider's been okay. He's just been pumping the zone full of strikes. Tigers have played nice defense behind him. Two balls, one strike count to Josh Shaw here in the bottom of the eighth inning. You let him just go the rest of the way here, or? I think that's the plan. I, I, again, you you got to get through still now. You got, what, we got 20 innings left. If you're a Clemson Tiger, you're going to have to mm. navigate 20 innings, 18 of which are going to be against a Vanderbilt club that demands that you pitch and defend because they're going to on their side of things. So. Yeah, I think if he can get through this ball game with only two pitchers, he's put himself in a pretty good spot. Gets Shaw on a strikeout. Here's that good arm side life, and this one had a little sink to it too. That's just a filthy two-seamer right there. Brocato, 0 for 3 today. I think the wild card for Clemson is still Gilliam. You know, you, you've gotten to the point now where you, you've just used him for a few outs so far. Through two thirds of an inning against yeah. Morehead State, so he's as rested as he could possibly be. I'm sure he's rearing to go. You get through this one without using him, and he's good for this one. Or he's good for tonight and good for tomorrow. Yeah, or you got a position where maybe you're up a run in the seventh, and you you let him throw, you know, an extended period. Maybe he throws three or four innings because he's able to do that. But regardless, they're in a good spot with their best bullpen arm. Miller a little wild there. One out walk to Brocato. 
here in the eighth. If Clemson wins this game and then beats Vanderbilt twice, they will host the Super Regionals because Florida State was two and none, lost to Samford in the opening round and a three-run walk-off home run for Mississippi State eliminated them from the tournament. Oklahoma beat the Bulldogs last night. They're in the driver's seat in the regional final tonight, and they are waiting for the winner of Sanford, Mississippi State. That game going on right now. Mississippi State up 9-7 to seven in the eighth. So it looks like they'll get the Bulldogs. and I think that projects to be a very offensive regional final. The Mississippi State team is really swinging the bats well right now. Oklahoma posted 20 on the Bulldogs the first time around. Mm. So you know they're swinging it well. Luke Stanfield, way back in the first inning, hit a no-doubter. Oh, wow. This is scorched. Oh. Green got a little too cute with it, trying to flip it to Davidson, and everybody's safe. No, that's exactly what happened now. It looks like Green might be battling a cramp. Like his hamstring cramp. But, you know, it would have been all-time great if he was able to execute the glove flip, but the ball was hit so hard that he really didn't need to. He could have flipped this one with his hand, and they would have turned it easy. But he, he went with the glove and it gets caught in the webbing, which is so easy to do. Davidson with a nice job of trying to finish off the play. And now it looks like, I don't know if he pulled it or if he just cramped up. Looks like he just cramped up. Jordan, the everyday second baseman, one of the vocal leaders for Clemson. He's going to try to stay out there. To me, the glove flip is so much easier when you're going to your forehand as a shortstop or you're going to your forehand as a second base. Yeah. The backhand is very difficult. And the point of the glove flip was initially started because you had, that was your only option. You had your time was so tight that the only you didn't have time to transfer. But when you dive for a bullet one hopper, you got plenty of time to switch it to your hand and flip the, you know flip the ball. So to me, that was a unmerited risk. Well, Wyatt Mascarella could make it a little interesting if he gets into one here with two on and one out. Georgia just keeps tacking onto their lead. Now up 11 to 7 on Troy. Troy heads to the bottom of the ninth, needing four to tie against the Bulldogs. Your Huskies trying to eliminate the home team, Coastal Carolina. And by the way, there's a 100% yeah. chance the Bulldogs are going to play tonight. That's Sam good point. Samford. That's a good point. And Mississippi State. If Mississippi State and Georgia both hold on, that would make the SEC 18-3 and three to start the regionals. Is that good? I mean, you could just tell everyone, instead of having supers in eight spots, let's go back to Hoover again, I guess. I mean, the left side of the bracket has a chance to look like that, except for... Lubbock, that's the only regional where an SEC team's not in play. Now, A&M's in a tough spot having lost to Texas yesterday. But you could easily end up with six SEC schools and two Texas schools on the left side. Just missed. New Clemson is just as passionate as you see as any they school are. in the country and they love competing against the southeastern conference it has a very similar feel to it yes, SEC it does. school and 
They've had their way with the Gamecocks in numerous sports in recent years. That's a great rivalry in this state. Going back and forth with Alabama for championships yeah. right now in football. And that was a good night in Tampa. Well, that was actually Arizona, I see. Yes, okay, that was the year before. There's, there's, uh, that's on there somewhere, Tampa. And last year, of course, lost in the Sugar Bowl. Three straight games against the Crimson Tide. These are great days uh, to be a yeah. Tiger, for sure. We, we mentioned it earlier this weekend. Soccer program is phenomenal. Baseball team is one of the five, six best in the country. Football is one of the two, three best. And the basketball team, made, men's team, made the Sweet 16 this year. Yeah. Mascarella, that's a base hit, and that's going to plate a run as Brocato comes around. It's 8-4. to four. Well, no, Andrew C's going to go out, so I guess they're just going to have a chat, maybe ask him how he's feeling. But you know, we talked about them. the perfect case scenario is Miller finishes this game out, but now you might end up in a safe situation here, Taylor, and you might need Gilliam. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, LHN, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip Around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Basis Loaded channel. All coverage is available on the ESPN app. No excuses, especially on the weekend, to follow along in a wide variety of options and ways that you can consume this tournament. I, I guess a little bit of an excuse tomorrow on a Monday, but none on a Sunday. There he is, warming up. And this is Brandon Miller, who singled in the seventh inning. It's a red storm try to claw their way back into this one. Well, hey, uh, <laughs> they are in striking distance. Miller swinging the bat nicely so far in this region. Like one swing of the bat, we got ourselves a one-run ball game. Hit that one out to right field. Seth Beer goes back to the wall, and it's actually oh. Wharton who makes the catch. Moving up to third base is Stamfel. And now they're runners at the corners, but that was really wow. close to a one-run game. Wow. There is just a slight breeze blowing in, I don't know, a few miles an hour, and a ball that was hit way up in the air. Look at that, just a slight breeze that I think cost Miller a three-run homer right here. This one got real interesting. Get it, get it. Morton gets to the wall and catches it. Ball just a couple feet short of going out. That's a rough one there. Off the bat, it looked like it was headed out towards right field to beer, but Wharton camping out underneath it at the base of that hill. And that was a loud second out. Now it's Jordan Gillerman who takes strike one. He's 0 for 3. Mark Venice pinching, pinch hitting for him. Five at bats, no home runs on the season. Be a nice time for his first one right here. Right, he's hit a ton, but foul. Well, you can tell the swings are a lot more comfortable, especially by the left-handed hitters. St. John's, you know, stacked their line. They got a lot of righties anyway, but stacked their lineup full of righties because of the left-hander Hennessy starting the game. And that matched up perfectly for Miller, but now they're using their bench with a few of these left-handers until they're making some quality swings. Jacob Hennessy, he lasted two and a third. Ryan Miller has pitched five and a third so far today. Oh, 
2-2 to Venice. I tell you what, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a fan base, maybe outside of LSU, that is more engaged with the umpire than this one. Jeff Macias has heard enough from the dugout, but I think they got a legitimate gripe there. That's a high changeup that faded late. Looked like, looked like it finished as a strike to me. But we really haven't seen Macias call the high strike all game. Got him. Clemson takes an 8-4 lead to the ninth inning. This regional went to a seventh and decisive game last year, and Will Toffey for Vanderbilt hit two home runs and drove in five. Vanderbilt defeated Clemson 8-zip to advance to the Super Regionals. Vandy pitching staff combining for a four-hit shutout. Might we see the same thing take place again this year? Clemson's three outs from at least playing them tonight would have to beat them to force a game seven tomorrow. Yeah, still a lot of baseball left to be played. Certainly Vanderbilt's in the driver's seat, but anything can happen. I'll tell you what, though, I, it's tough to bet against that Vanderbilt pitching staff at this point. Luke Stamfel moves to shortstop. And Mark Venice stays in the game at first base. Davidson hits it on the ground. One down. The first baseman goes to short. That doesn't happen every day. Of course, the ball finds you. You know that, right? If you yes. come in the game, they hit it to you immediately. Seth Beer, big homer in the fourth inning to get Clemson on the board. He walked in the seventh. He got awfully mechanical with you the other day as you guys started talking shop. As he takes a pitch that... Did it clip him? Did it clip him? Get his beard? Get his chin? Hit his chin. Everybody know what you call. Yeah, it oh, did. Yeah, it did. Mm. Looks like he glanced kind of right, right by the, the cheek or the chin. Yeah, got a little shoulder too, maybe. That's the advantage of having a beard, having a little protection there. As he smiles it off. So Williams comes up with one on and one out. But I, I was impressed as you guys were talking shop about how you can't swing your way out of a slump. Here's the first pitch to Williams block for ball one. Yeah, I was impressed just in general with how mature his approach was. Uh, like you said, can't swing your way out of a slump when he talked about shrinking the zone with two strikes. He talked about dealing with expectations. You know, just a very mature kid who you can tell has been sharpened by being the guy for so long. Two and one. Seth's going to, he potentially, Beer could hear his name called tomorrow night as Keith Law has him in his mock draft, drafted by the Red Sox near the end of the first round. I know Seth would also like to be playing some ball against Vanderbilt once again. Mascarella, man, that was really late and he can't grab it. Took him forever to find it in the sun. You know, he's looking up in a bright sky. I don't know if he's necessarily battling the sun because, again, he's he's not he's not trying to block the sun. He takes the mask off. He's holding it. If he was battling it, you think he'd yeah. be using his off hand a little bit. Certainly a bright sky, and he just just clanked it.
He's had a tough day back there. Outs are so hard to come by when you give one back, especially to a talented, dangerous right-hand hitter. I mean, talking about the National Player of the Week. This guy launched three balls last week at the ACC tournament. So you feel like you got him out. The next thing you know, he's still standing there. It can be deflating for an opposing club. Coastal came back and tied it up versus UConn. Mm. Are hanging in there. Mississippi State hanging on to a one-run lead. NC State and East Carolina, two great teams from that state, both in elimination games today as Williams strikes out. Indiana up early on Texas A&M with a couple guys on. Steven Kolick. Number three starter for AM off to a rough start. So here's Wilkie, who is one for four today. Ball one. And at bat in the sixth inning, changed the entire game. He, he came to the plate in a 3 1 game with two runners on. He was in an 0-2 hole. He battled back to 2-2. Two and two. Took the next pitch. It was called ball three by home plate umpire Jeff Macias, maybe just a little bit inside. Fouled off the next one and then deposited a double down the left field line. Clemson's never looked back. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Wharton followed with a base hit. And the next inning, they tacked on two more. And, you know, you got to believe that gives this offense a lot of confidence because even that game they won against Morehead State, there was a bunch of missed opportunities. So to finally start cashing in on some of those, got to give them some good vibes going into the second ball game. Good vibe tribe. Now here's my question for you. Today. When you play two in one day, do you, do you do a new arm sleeve and write something new on game two or – Hey, I'd keep going, yeah, because I, you know, I don't know if they're going to wear the same color combination or not tonight. So you have to always be mindful of that. Oh, you think he maybe sometimes goes with like a colored sleeve? Like a purple sleeve would look good, wouldn't it? It would. Good Vibe Tribe is my favorite, though, so far. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Seth Beer's going to get a head start down there at first base. Here's the 3-2 to Wilkie. Hit back through the box. Base hit. Seth will go on to third. Runners at the corners. Two down. Who says Seth Beer can't run, Taylor? Watch my man go first to third right there. Turns the base nicely. And I love to see a big man. Look at it. He's trying to run. Boy, he's, he's letting it eat a little bit. Sliding, getting dirty. It's a ball player right there. I like the hands whipping and, yeah. and he put his head down. Reminded me of you in the parking lot this morning. <laughs> oh, man. Hanging on, brother. I'm hanging on. I was impressed. Swing and a miss from Morton. I didn't know you were spying on me. I was. I wasn't meaning to, but my wife and I were walking by, and she says, is that Chris running at full speed in the parking lot? And I said, yes, ma'am. Base hit, Morton. 9-4, Clemson. A 
Well, there you go. You got to have some guys come up with big hits. How about the senior with now two RBI base hits? Punched out his first couple times, but single walk, single in his last three trips. Big part of the story today for the Tigers. Coach Blank Meyer will go back to the bullpen, trailing 9-4 to four with two down in the top of the ninth inning. Clemson Tigers looking good today. Nine four Clemson leading St. John's with two out in the ninth inning, and the Clemson offense has caught fire as they've scored eight of their nine runs with two down today. How about that? I mean that that's what it boils down to. Again, Monty Lee brought it up specifically before this game started. Need to start getting some big hits, man. Tournament baseball, championship baseball, it often boils down to that. Sam Laura is the seventh pitcher of the day for Ed Blankmeyer. Freshman from Lawrence, Mass. His ninth appearance. Big right-hander gets, gets an opportunity to pitch in a regional environment. Big moment for him. Wilkie is at third, Wharton at first. Seth Beard scored on Wharton's single. And the leader of the tribe is at the plate. I might start rocking an arm sleeve. Yeah, during broadcasts? Yeah, on yeah. camera? Because I'm not real sure what an arm sleeve does on your left arm, but it looks cool. I mean, we are in completely in the era of the sleeve. I mean, in basketball, you have to wear... I mean, you are fully covered yeah. now, like head right. to toe, right? Right. Yeah, arms and leg sleeves. Green's had a good day. Two for three, a double, a single, and a sacrifice bunt, but he strikes out here. Last chance for the Red Storm, and John Valenti coming up. Clemson the last three years has been unable to get out of this round of the NCAA tournament despite hosting. Lost to the Pokes in the regional final. Couldn't even force a game seven that year. Did last year when they beat Vandy on Sunday but lost 8-0 on Monday. Trying to get back to the same situation this year. Face Vanderbilt in just a couple of hours. Six Eastern time. Last time the program was in a super regional it was 2010 Ryan Miller has gone five and two-thirds out of the pen he came into this game when Clemson trailed three nothing and the Johnnies are thinking rally and it's Antico leading off this know. is this is the time to do that like the other day yes, we saw them yes, doing this in a yes, tie game yeah. uh, I'm this all about it when you're down five yeah It's like Chinga, you know, I mean, right there. You got to be careful. Yeah. It leans too much to one side. And Tico gets into that one. Beer goes back and watches, watches it fly out of the yard, eight to four. Yikes. Hats, man. Off to a good start. How different are the swings by the lefties? How about Antico, the fastest guy on the field? He's taking his time. He's trying to get the, the fellows riled up. The fastest dude on the field showing us some power the last couple days. Back-to-back -back days with bombs, and that ball is way gone. Just a fast-twitch athlete that's got some real juice. And he's going to stop and admire it. Stanford didn't do it early in the ball game, but... Antico knows that one's long gone. Fifth home run for Antico. Valenti, possibly for the final time in a Red Storm uniform.
doubled in the seventh. One for four, five hits in this regional, certain to be on the all-tournament team. 2-0 pitch, another hit, and you wonder how much more Ryan Miller's got left. Yeah, I think you got to get him out of there now. You know, now it looks like if you, you got to go to Gilliam, and if you're a Vanderbilt Commodore fan, you're excited about this development. Jamie Gallison comes to the plate in a 9-5 game. seen Lee go out just yet. Now the pitching coach is going to come out instead, Andrew C. Now this is a pitching change. That is Monty Lee coming out. And, and Vanderbilt takes the field in just over two and a half hours. Will they meet the Clemson Tigers? They lead St. John's nine to five in the ninth inning and now coach lee turns to his closer riley gilliam shut down dude not that big of a guy five foot ten 170 pounds but it's a big arm the stuff is loud fastball 92 94 and as good a curveball as you'll see in college baseball sub one era 54 punches and 37 innings Ryan Miller stands to win the game. He pitched in relief of Jacob Hennessy, came in with one out in the third inning and pitched all the way into the ninth. For Monty Lee came and got him, and Tico homered off of him to start the inning. Valenti, the ultimate gamer for St. John, singled in what might be his first, his last at bat if the Red Storm don't rally. A lot of hits, but set a career high for innings pitch today. Here's Gallison, ball one. Gallison doubled in the first, again in the third. Another one of these St. John's players that's having a nice regional. Strike one. You get the first look at the big breaking ball by Gilliam. He's got the one where he can throw it for a strike, but in a two-strike count, the breaking ball look a lot different. Oh. Hard to pull the trigger on that one the first couple times you see it. It just – it's got some real bite, almost – Looks like a high heater out of his hands and then takes a nosedive. Yeah. Off the plate by an inch. But that is an impressive pitch. Why don't you go tell the home crowd that was off the plate? <laughs> I don't think they agree with you. And just reporting Mr. <laughs> Macias' verdict. Fastball up to 94. Nice job right there by Galzin just to get a piece of that one. I think any time you got the curveball that Gilliam has and you see somebody chase a fastball up there around the letters, that's when you got to break the next one off. If he's going to pull the trigger at that one, you should be able to get a chase on a breaking ball. Hit in the air. Wharton goes over. Beer is there to make the catch. One down in the ninth. Nice 
job by Gallows in there, hanging in on that breaking ball. Hit that ball pretty good. Not good enough. First big out, retired. So here's Josh Shaw, who homered in the first inning, two for four, doubled in the third. That is a lot of bite, doesn't it? Yeah, and again, he can shape it differently. He's got the bigger one, got the tighter one, and does a really nice job with that elevated fastball, too. So the combo of those two pitches are why you see kind of the crazy numbers that he has. It's a little closer than Valenti wanted it to be. be interesting to see how pro ball values Gilliam successful as he's been here in his three years as good as that breaking ball is I know he doesn't look the traditional part of a, a back end bullpen guy but the stuff certainly plays yeah doesn't rely on his gas as much as some others because he has such a great so-called secondary pitch yeah, I mean, really, in today's world, like a Lance McCullers, I mean, you could see him getting drafted, just come in, throw that curveball. There's the fastball here, and Shaw spoils it. I mean, the velo's real. I mean, it's 94 95. So, anytime you got a specialty pitch like him, you, you hard to believe there's not a place for him some, in somebody's bullpen. Anthony Brocato would be next, and then it's Stanfield after that. And St. John's tries to extend their season. Win whipping in Clemson, and Shaw lays off. Indiana is beating Texas A&M nine to nothing. Flipping the script on what A&M did, did, did to them in game one. Purdue was ahead of Houston at last glance, so maybe the Big Ten with a better day today. That's bounced up there, full count. Still in the first inning down there in Austin with A&M. Two teams from Louisiana playing in Oregon. Makes today. sense. <laughs> and on the other side of the state, Coastal Carolina over in Conway's up against it against Connecticut out to down to their last few outs down to run. Here Clemson's trying to advance to tonight. 3-2 pitch. Hit on the ground and in between short and third. Red Storm two aboard. Just keep bringing the next guy up. Figure out a way to get the tying run to the plate. Keep adding to the rally cap pile. You never know. Stanfield on deck. Everyone has given up their hat. Rally cap or rally 12 cap time for St. John's. Team pitches now. It's going to say the more he throws, yeah. the happier Tim Corbin and Vanderbilt becomes about their chances tonight. If you have to really work your closer in this one. Hit in the air to left field. Going back is Hall. 
it's a one run game. Hey, now, the Johnnies will not go quietly, folks. Bracado gets a breaking ball right down Broadway, and we got ourselves a brand new ball game. I tell you, it's a good thing Clemson has kept tacking on runs the last couple innings because they need every one of them right now. Anthony Bracado launches a breaking ball from Gilliam right down Broadway and a bat flip to boot as the Johnnies have made this one a brand new game. That was way out of here. Yes. And now the guy coming up also hit one way out of here in the first inning. Yeah, Luke I don't know which, which one's farther you think here, Taylor. There's another hanging off speed pitch. Stample definitely didn't enjoy his as much as Bercado did. That one's off the top of the overhang. Bercado's was over the left center field seats. Johnny's had played some really, really good baseball here down the stretch in this ball game to hang around. And Antico launched one off the indoor hitting facility. I mean, these have not been wall scrapers. The season is on the line for both of these teams here in a 9-8 game in the bottom of the ninth. Two balls, no strikes. I think about it. Now that it's a one-run game, I think about Gallison not scoring from first on the hit-and-run double, and I think about the throw that Bracado made to retire Bird at the plate. Both runs that teams have not capitalized on. Gallison to left field. Hall goes back up the hill, two down. That was a loud out. Stanford, boy, he just caught it a little towards the end. Mascarella yesterday hit a couple home runs, Taylor, a couple balls way out of the yard, too, as the Johnnies have flexed their muscle. So now they bring the tying run to the plate in the form of a man, Wyatt Mascarella, that's already hit two home runs in this region. Resting heart rate of everyone <laughs> wearing purple and orange right now is at an all-time high. Ball one. Another hitter's count. Three balls, no strikes. Brandon Miller waiting on deck. I think he let him swing. Let him keyhole one right here. If Gilliam just grooves him one, he can. He has proven he could tie this game up with one swing of the bat. Strike one. That's it to center field. Drew Wharton goes back up the hill. Clemson survives. The St. John's Red Storm left their heart on the field today against the Tigers. Ooh, they made it interesting. They made it very interesting. 16 hits and eight runs. At the end of the day, Clemson put one more on the board, and the Red Storm laid it out on the field. Clemson advances, but the Johnnies have a lot to feel good about. Our final score here in Clemson, 9-8. to eight. Tonight at 6 Eastern, it's Vanderbilt and Clemson at 6 p.m. Eastern time. A rematch from last season. Clemson was able to win that game last year and force a seventh game on Monday. They try to do the same thing.
tonight. Clemson had a walk-off single on Friday to beat Moorhead State 4-3. Lost to Vandy by that score yesterday. They survive against St. John's in a shootout today, 9-8. For Chris Burke and our entire crew, I'm Taylor Zarzer. We are back in just over two hours' time for the regional final between the Doors and the Tigers.